please. Uh, we cannot hear you clearly, ma. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, you are faint. It's, it's not loud. We cannot hear oh, you, okay. ma. Okay, my volume is not good. Um, but for me, it's good. So yeah. It's clear, Pastor. Yes, yeah, clear. Oh, it is clear. Ah, then I'm so sorry, success. Uh, you know, it may be your internet which is interfering. Hope it clears up. Um, I did try to increase my volume here. OK, yeah, uh, whoever is present here, uh, maybe, yeah, um, you know, uh, Pastor John Paul, if you could, you know, pray for us, uh, we can get started. Yeah. Sure, Pastor. Yeah. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we humble ourselves once again before your presence. And as we begin to learn from your word, we pray, O oh God, that you would minister to us, help us all to understand your heart and to follow your words, O oh God. We pray uh, for uh, all of us in the class. We pray that all of us would be able to um, listen to your word, and also to follow along uh, what you are trying to teach us this morning, God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, just a moment. All right. Uh, so we've had two sessions on holiness. Um, and uh, we looked at different aspects, different facets of the holiness of God. Uh, that was our main focus. Um, today, we will look at the importance of holiness. Why should I be holy? Why is it important for me to be holy? And uh, under this topic, Pastor has tried to you know, um, deal with some practical questions which people may raise with regard to holiness. So it's, in fact, a good chapter. Um, now, those of you who watch, you know, on Google Classroom, uh, the notes have been posted uh, in the stream page. So you will be able to, uh, you know, go through that. Uh, so what we are covering today is actually chapter five. OK, so um, I've just kind of moved it up a bit because I thought it would be good to look at that before we, you know, proceed further with the subject. Uh, so um, later. Uh, when you get the time, you can you know go through the notes for chapter five, which talks about why we need to be coming to our class lecture. Um, we, maybe we could begin with uh, one basic question with a sense Jeffina raised last time. She said, "What is the difference between righteousness and holiness?" And at that point of time, I think my answer was. Um, righteousness is the position that we have in Christ. He has already declared us as being completely justified, you know, and acceptable in the eyes of God. Uh, so that would be righteousness. Holiness on the other hand is the practical side of it. Uh, it, it um, we, we reflect the beauty of God. We reflect his nature in the way we live, in the choices that we make. So holiness is more the practical side, while righteousness is the established position. Um, so that would be one way of answering that question. Uh, now. Um, the question which may be raised by certain people is that at the moment of salvation, if I was clothed in the, in, in the righteousness of Christ, then where is the need for me to even do anything further? Am I not already perfectly righteous? Am I not already perfectly justified? I mean, um, uh, in the eyes of God, I'm already fully acceptable. As, as, as acceptable as Jesus Christ himself, because I am now clothed in his very righteousness. Uh, so where is the need for me to even try to be holy? Where is the need for me to even, you know, make living sacrifices each day and, um, you know, uh, carry my cross and, and give up the things which my flesh longs for? Uh, why do I need to go through those disciplines? But anyway, I'm already completely righteous. You know, so uh, that could be a question which uh, someone may raise. So um, we'll address that and then we'll move on to some other questions which people may raise with regard to holiness. So this first question, uh, if we already have Christ's righteousness, then aren't we already holy? Do we really need to do anything more? Um, I'll uh, use one of my examples, uh, you know, um, and hopefully that will help a little bit. 
let's take the example of a child with a very serious uh, learning disability. Now, this child uh, is trying very hard, uh, trying to give their best, uh, but they really wonder whether they'll ever make it to the next grade because they are so far behind all the other students. Um, you know, and uh, the child is struggling and the child has that tension uh, every day of whether uh, he will actually make it to the next grade or not. And so one day the teacher does something very wise for the child. Um, the teacher gives him his marks card, you know, the marks card, which you would actually receive at the end of the term, which will tell you what your scores are. And And whether you have qualified at all to go on to the next grade or not. So the teacher gives him his marks card and he sees that he has received 100 or 100. You don't even have to wonder whether you're going to make it to the next grade. Uh, so your, your future is secure. Now you don't have the pressure of, you know, uh, uh, needing to perform, uh, needing to achieve uh, some impossible, uh, you know, standard. All you need to do now is just give your very best to reach your personal full potential as a person. So uh, as a student, you know, try your very best each day. Try to learn as much as you can. Try to grasp as much as, uh, you know, you uh, you are able to. And uh, We'll see how far you go, you know, in, the, in with this process. So now what the teacher is saying, you have been set free from this a need to perform and try to achieve an impossible standard, which you never will be able to, uh, you know, reach on your own. Now you have just been given the freedom to just sit down and do your best, whatever you can from your side. Um, and, you know, not be lazy, not take advantage of the second chance that has been given to you, but appreciate what is being offered and take hold of that eagerly and use this opportunity to develop yourself, to become whatever you, you know, you can, uh, whatever you can achieve. So um, what the teacher is doing for this child is um, giving him, first of all, uh, that, you know, um, free privilege of making it to the next grade, even though the child uh, is not actually qualified for it. So that has been guaranteed. And the teacher has also given the child this chance to now develop himself, you know, at his own pace, you know, based on his limitations, based on whatever uh, skills he has, just based on that to develop himself at his own pace. Um, so now there is no pressure. Now the child is free to just take that second chance and do all that he can. Now, of course, you know, this is just an example. Uh, so one main um, uh, difference between this example and our position in Christ uh, is that uh, we have the potential of the Holy Spirit in us. Now, in the, in the, in the human example which we used, that child is going to be having his limitations. So uh, whatever he is going to reach is not really going to be uh, at the level of an A-level student. But in our case, uh, the goal for us, which Jesus has, which God has, which God the Father has for us, is that we literally become like the son. Uh, so uh, we don't have to tell ourselves, oh, you will never reach the full potential. No, we literally have been designed to reach the full potential. One day we are going to be like Christ. Uh, so we no longer have this pressure of wondering whether we're going to make it into heaven. We obviously anyway would not have. However hard we would have worked, however you know we would have, however hard we would have tried to keep ourselves uh, godly and all of that, it would never ever have worked. Uh, we are in at least in uh, you know in that case we are like that child in the example uh, we have this uh, spiritual disability uh, to ever attain to god's standards on our own it just cannot be done so freely as a free gift uh, god has given us this privilege he said see on your own you can never make it 
now i am clothing you in christ righteousness i have declared you as acceptable in my eyes so it's a privilege that has just been freely given to us and now he says this is your second chance now without the pressure of you know performance of having to uh, wonder whether you'll make it or not you already are in you already are in my family now start acting like part of my family um develop yourself you know on a day to day basis with the help of the holy spirit um to to reflect the beauty of jesus so it is a freedom that we are now stepping into to just you know uh, work towards this you know at our pace uh, because different people have different personality types and uh, we all approach life uh, differently so each of us would begin to act out this this righteousness that we have been given uh, all of us would step into this holiness which we are being offered uh, in our own different ways so um, we cannot really have a common grading system and say oh see this person has reached this level of holiness and look at that person that person is at that level we would never be able to you know make judgments like that so um, the thing is we now have been given the freedom um, by god the father to walk in step with the holy spirit you know cooperate with him hear from him be guided by him and learn on a day to day basis to live the way jesus lived when he was on this earth because when jesus was on this earth he was uh, you know hit with all the sins and the temptations and and all the situations that we too face and he knew how to overcome each one of those um because of his close association with the father he knew how to handle each of those situations and so now his spirit can teach us uh to uh, learn those same things and uh, so even as we are sensitive to the holy spirit and even as we walk with him we will be able to uh, walk in holiness uh, you know just as jesus did because he's going to train us uh, to be able to do that um so this uh, uh righteousness that has been given to us it's been given as a free gift it is not meant to be uh, taken advantage of uh, we are not meant to take it lightly uh, we are meant to use the second chance that has been given to us you know uh, recognize it for the privilege that it is and start uh, using our second chance uh to really become like him because that is the goal with which he saved us so that we can be like him so that we can be part of his family so that we can have an honor which has not even been given to the angels um i mean this is just a supposition okay i mean a pure assumption nobody knows uh, exactly what you know drove satan to what he did uh, but um you know people say that the reason that he hates humanity so much and is always targeting us and always trying to bring us down is because he is jealous of us uh we uh you know the angels too were created you know like uh, god they were given the thing the freedom to uh, you know make choices they too were given the reasoning faculties to be able to think uh, to a certain extent the way god thinks so they too uh, have many of the attributes which we humans have but we were created in his own image for a higher grander purpose we are part of his family um, you know the angels are his servants uh, they are his uh, you know his holy ones who uh, do all his bidding but we are personal family we go around calling him abba daddy you know so uh, they say that satan hates us so much because we have been given a grander privilege uh, than even the angels and now that's just something that people say uh, but you know uh, i want us to appreciate the sheer privilege that has been given to us by the lord um, so uh, now because we have already been declared righteous and we don't have to be worrying each day what our position is in god now we can just relax in him rest in him 
and use this amazing privilege that has been given to us to start becoming more like Christ. That is God's goal for us. Uh, so that is the reason why we press on towards holiness. You know, um, like when Paul says, right, in Philippians, he says, I press on towards that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of him. He understands why Christ has taken hold of him to change him into something amazing. He was just this uh, person who was going around persecuting uh, Christians. But now Christ took hold of him to turn him into something amazing. Uh, and so he says, I will just keep pressing on till I'm able to take hold of that. And uh, so that uh, is what we all are also trying to do. Uh, Christ has taken hold of us uh, to you know, raise our status to, to a greater level than even that of the angels. Uh, and so now having understood the privilege that has been granted us, uh, we begin to work towards that. So um, even though positionally we have been already declared righteous in Christ, now we are practically working towards reflecting him being like him um, you know so that um, uh, when 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 god you know like i'm just symbolically fictionally if god were to we had to introduce all his children and then you know, he would say ah here's my eldest one jesus and then you know, he would point to you next and say ah this is my you know second child and then there should not be like this horrible contrast between the first child and the second child. All of them should be bearing the same nature because the children of God are representing him. You know, so uh, so uh, we are now trying to be like our elder brother in all aspects. We are working towards that because we are part of that royal family. We're not just people. We are part of his family that has the that's the privilege that has been granted to us all right so uh, that leads us to the second question which people ask you know and the answer has already uh, been kind of partially answered so if i already have my ticket to heaven why should i even try to be holy ticket is guaranteed i'm anyway going to make it uh, so why why put in the effort and yeah, yeah so the, the one main thing is because we have now been given the status of being belonging to his very family and the angels do you know um uh, god's bidding on our behalf when we pray god sends off the angels to you know um uh, do things in the spiritual realm on our behalf you know to fulfill god's purposes for us for our lives so it's such a high status that has been granted to us. So we remember uh, that privilege. We recognize that privilege. And we do not abuse the second chance that has been granted to us. Um, but there are other additional benefits you know, when we walk in holiness. Uh, because one main thing about sin, it affects our relationship with this God who loved us so much that he was willing to make us part of his family, family members, uh, you know, of the, the private circle. He's made us part of that. Um, so um, sin affects our relationship with this amazing God. And we would not want that, right? Uh, so if, you know, we could, we could have one person read out First John chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. Um, yeah we could maybe uh, reflect a bit on this uh, on this passage first john 1 6 to 7 please wow are any of the students there first john 1 6 to 7 please first john chapter 1 verse 6 to 7 if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, if we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So God wants this relationship with us. He wants this daily fellowship with us. And uh, so... Uh, like it says in the last portion of verse 7, he is willing to purify us from all sin because it's important for him, this personal relationship with us, this personal walk with us on a daily basis. He enjoys it. 
I mean, I don't know how many people on earth actually enjoy us. You know, sometimes even our own family members are a little fed up with us. But he actually enjoys our company. He wants that walk with us on a daily basis. And so if I'm continuing to live in sin, not even appreciating the second chance that I have been given, and he, you know, and I claim that I'm walking with him and having fellowship with him, that would be such a lie. Okay. Uh, that would be such a farce. And that is not what we are, you know, required uh, to be doing. And so he says, you know, if you're claiming to be having fellowship with Jesus and walking with him, at least behave like you, you know, you are having that walk. Don't be walking in darkness and say, oh, I'm walking with Jesus. Jesus does not walk in darkness. So he says, you know, live in the way you're meant to, because the blood of Jesus, um, you know, is uh, has been poured out to purify you from sin, not to encourage you to continue in sin, no, to purify you and give you a second chance to be royalty, to be part of God's own family. OK, so God is always near. His presence is very, very close to each person. It is we who choose not to reach out to him from our side and strengthen that connection. From his side, he's always there for us. But from our side, we get to choose whether we want to connect with him and strengthen our connection with him or whether we just want to maintain a weak link, you know, just to hold on to that ticket to heaven. Um, that is entirely up to us. So we must choose to reach out to him and, you know, maintain and, and, and keep increasing that bond with him. Um, now, when it talks about a walk with him, uh, you know, uh, uh, so a walk is not just a few steps, right? A walk goes on and on, uh, you know, um, kilometer after kilometer. Uh, it's it's a walk. So here it's talking about the lifestyle. It's not talking about, you know, um, us committing a sin now and then. It's talking about a lifestyle of sin where a person has decided that they like the way they are living. They have no desire to change. They have no desire to honor God. And so they continue to walk the way they wish. So uh, here it's not referring uh, to people you know, who may sin because they are still learning to walk in holiness. And so they slip up now and then, and they fall into sin. So it's not really talking about that. It's talking about people who are saying, oh, I have fellowship with him. I've been walking with him daily. but." Their lifestyle shows that on a daily basis, they've actually been doing something else. And so uh, here this, uh, in the scripture, John is saying, do not be that, do, do not be like that. Don't live out that kind of a lie. OK, so um, sin can destroy the relationship that we have with the Lord. And um, because we value him, we value uh, this, this fellowship that we have with him, we choose not to you know, live in sin. We choose to be holy so that our bond with him is strengthened on a daily basis. Also, it is very important to recognize that it is only through holiness that we can be a part of him. You know, it makes us remember those, that passage where Jesus washed the feet of the people and the conversation that took place between Peter and Jesus at, on that you note know, during that instance. Um, so if you could actually read that, please, uh, if someone could read out for us, John chapter 13, verses 8 to 11, John 13, 8 to 11. John 13, 8 to 11, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would, be, who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. All right, so um, so Peter is saying, Lord, why are you washing my feet? You know, you're the master. You're not supposed to be doing that. 
and then Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. So on a daily basis, the Lord washes us, okay, so that we can continue having a part with him. Um, it's like this, you know, example that he uses of the wine and the branches for that branch to maintain its connectivity, to be really strongly connected to the wine, it needs a symbolic washing. Uh, so on a daily basis, Jesus wants to wash us. And which is what you know we saw in the earlier verses where it says that his blood purifies us uh, from all sin. On a daily basis, he is purifying us from our sins so that that connection of the branch to the wine can be strong because when we are connected to him that is when we are going to be bearing fruit otherwise it's such a pointless existence you're just going to be like all the other people on earth who are trying to get by on their own and there's not going to be any difference between you and the others you only when you are a part of him then his life is flowing into you and then you know you're going to be living a uh, a different life from the others. Uh, you're going to be at a higher level than 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 others. And uh, so Jesus says, "I need to be washing you every day, and you need to come to me for that washing. You need to want to uh, live in that higher walk of holiness. If you you know wallow in your sins the way everyone else is, then you will not be a part of me." You know, it's what God is saying. Uh, so when Peter gets to know that he can only be part of Jesus if Jesus washes his feet, you know, um, the, because of the love that he has, oh, then in that case, if, if you know, if washing is going to mean that I'm going to get to be a part of you, then please go ahead, wash my head, wash my hands, you know, wash all of me. And Jesus says, you know what, you've already been washed. You've already been cleaned. Uh, it's just the feet on a daily basis that has to be done so that you can continue being a part of me. But the rest of you, uh, it has already been cleaned. Uh, what did Jesus mean? Uh, you know, he kind of clarifies that later in John chapter 15, verses 3 to 4. So if one of us could read out, please, John 15, 3 to 4. John chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah that, yeah. Should, that should be enough. Uh, so here Jesus explains, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. There are this bunch of people who believed what they had been told. They accepted the words of Jesus and they began to live according to those words. So when they did that, they were cleansed by his word. His word cleaned them. Now there was one disciple who heard the words, pretended to have accepted it and followed it, but he did not. So that man uh, continued to remain unclean. But the others who had placed their trust in Jesus, uh, who is literally the word of God, when they placed their trust in Jesus, the word of God, um, they were cleansed because of their faith. Uh, okay, so um, now that they have been cleansed, now they must continue to remain in him. Okay, so that is a, a conscious step that each of us would need to take on a daily basis where we choose to continue remaining in him uh, because only then, you know, uh, we will be able to uh, bear fruit. So. Uh, we it is true that we have our ticket to heaven, but for us to maintain that strong connection with him and be a part of him, uh, that daily conscious discipline of laying aside the sins and the temptations that are coming to us and consciously working towards living the way Jesus lived when he was on this earth, being like him, responding like him to different situations, that is something that we consciously do so that we can continue being part of him. Okay, so uh, holiness is necessary for us to maintain that relationship with the Lord. Another thing that we notice actually in that first John chapter one, uh, you know, passage which we read is that, um, you know, I'll just read out the passage again. And then if you uh, observe, 
uh, it says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, uh, we lie and do not live out the truth. And then it says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with, you know, if you have to fill up the blank over there, what would you, gen you know, you know, just logic wise, what would you fill up over there in the fill in the blank? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him is what you, we would generally say, right? But if you look at the wording over there, it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another is what it says over there. So there's an additional point being made in that passage, not only uh, by, by walking in the light, by maintaining a holy lifestyle, not only are you remaining a part of him, it actually also helps you to have fellowship with other believers. If you have noticed, when you, know, you and I are struggling in our relationships with certain people, not being able to live in love, um, not being able to live in unity, uh, it is mainly because at some level, our relationship with the Lord has, is not going right. Because when a person is really walking with the Lord, uh, you know, in perfect unity and fellowship and, you know, honoring him and loving him, we automatically find ourselves also living in love and unity with the believers. But when things are not very good between him and us, uh, when that when that branch has, you know, uh, kind of loosened its connection with the wine and not really well connected, and we have neglected that, you know, building up of that bond which we are supposed to do on a daily basis. When you and when we neglect that connection to him, it automatically affects our relationship with other people. We are no longer able to relate with them uh, as easily as we were able to before because all these other negative things, you know, creep in selfishness and ego and, um, you know, uh, uh, anger and all of that. Uh, so uh, one byproduct of staying connected to him is that we are able to uh, live in, a, you know, in, in the right way with other believers, even when those believers are rather tough to get along with. We will be able to do it if our connection with him is really strong. Uh, so that's another additional thing. Uh, we may have our ticket to heaven, but we will still need to walk in holiness if we wish to have good relationships with other people. Uh, so th that that's, um, that's a very essential thing. Holiness leads to better relationships. Um, and then a third thing uh, that we can see is that uh, we may have our ticket to heaven. Uh, Satan cannot do much about that because we finished making our commitment to the Lord and the Lord has accepted us into his family. But he can he will do his best so that we don't enjoy any of the privileges and benefits of being part of God's household. That he will do his best. You know, he could not prevent us from getting into the household. But at least now maybe he can, you know, um, keep us from enjoying the blessings of being in that household. So he will do everything possible to, to, to weaken that bond between the wine and the branch. So, um, you know, uh, just to use a very simple example, maybe we can look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Uh, if someone could read out Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Yeah, it says do not give place to the devil. Um, you know, in, in, in NIV, it says do not give the devil a foothold. One little foothold in your life and that's it. You know, he's going to establish himself there and try to keep you from the blessings of God. He's going to uh, see to it that you never enjoy your relationship with the Lord. You're all, you'll always be miserable. You'll always be drawn towards sin and your heart will not be here in the kingdom. You'll be wishing, oh, I wish I could be out there, but still hold on to my ticket. You know, you're going to be having all those um, very unsatisfactory feelings always constantly churning around inside you because there's this foothold that Satan has, uh, and uh, so uh, his desires will 
partially be your desires. The best way to deal with this is, you know, to get rid of him completely. Do not give him any foothold. Because as long as you allow, um, uh, entertain Satan to some extent in your life, um, Satan's desires uh, kind of corrupt your desires. And so you will be longing for the things of the world. You'll never be happy in the Lord. It's always better to make a clean break. When you make a clean break and you know just walk in the Lord and be a part of him, he, God's desire starts becoming your desires. You start thinking the way he thinks. You start looking at everything from his perspective. And you're free. Um, you enjoy where you are. But if you got one foot there in the world and one foot over here, uh, it's a very miserable existence. You will never be happy because there's a part of you which will be longing, yearning for uh, you know all the filth that you left behind. And uh, uh, if you actually go and wallow in that, then you'll be even more miserable because uh, yeah, that does not satisfy. Uh, you know, uh, it's just a very horrible existence. Uh, better to you know not give Satan even one foothold. So each day when he comes along and you know puts his foot in, um, as quickly as possible, get that foot out. You know, close that door. Say, Lord, uh, I'm so sorry. I've done this particular thing, but Lord. Uh, forgive me, purify me. Like you said, your blood fury purifies me from all sin. Purify me from this, Lord. Take away even that little bit of desire which, you know, uh, towards that thing which drove me to that act of sin. Oh, Lord, just clean me. I want to be on your side, 100% on your side. If you can just make that clean break every day and not allow Satan to even get one foothold into your life, then. Uh, you will be able to walk like Jesus. You will have the same desires that Jesus has. You will enjoy your, your relationship with him. Uh, you will be secure you know, in your walk with him. So um, you know, um, you're, it's not enough to have the ticket to heaven. It's also uh, important to strengthen your bond with him. Because when you do that, then you can begin to enjoy your Christian life. Uh, so do not give uh, uh, you know sin or Satan any access. And you have another verse which kind of talks about that. Uh, First John chapter three, if someone could read out verses twenty one and twenty two. First John three twenty one and twenty two, please. First John chapter three verse twenty one and twenty two. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, John ten ten says, right? I mean, what's the one goal that Satan has to steal and kill and destroy? Doesn't want us to enjoy the blessings of God. Doesn't want us to be happy. You know, doesn't want us to see going up to higher levels. Um, it just makes him so jealous. Uh, so um, we rather, uh, on the other hand, if we choose to, you know, walk with God and do what pleases Him, this is what happens for us. First John three twenty one to twenty two, where it says, you know, our hearts will no longer condemn us because we are living, you know. Um, uh, right with him. So we will feel this confidence to just go into his presence. And when we ask for anything, he will do it for us. He will uh, you know, grant us what we are uh, requesting because we are living in a way that pleases him. And this harmony between him and us, um, it's such a nice life. So best to you know, take your foot out of that other thing let it put both your feet on God's side, on this side of the fence, and stay here and just enjoy being in the Lord. That's the best thing that a believer can do. Um, also, if uh, we continue to live in sin and do not choose to walk in holiness, it really affects our ministry. I mean, you may not be a person in full-time ministry. You know, you may be a person you know holding a secular job, but uh, even there, wherever you are, you will not really be able to do any of the things that God, you know, has uh, destined for you. I mean, doing anything for His kingdom is a privilege, right? I mean, we're just humans; we don't have supernatural powers. But He chose to use people like us 
for his kingdom plans so we all you know even in our secular office we have a role to play uh, even when we you know hanging out with friends we have a divine role to play uh, i mean we are just people but god uses ordinary people like us to achieve supernatural things and so we have this dimension where we are called to achieve supernatural things for him and we will never be able to do that when we are living in sin uh, because you know people will look at us talking big about god but then they look at our lifestyle and think ha huh, he's just like us so what's the big deal he take he can talk big maybe he can quote scriptures but when it comes to basic lifestyle basic choices he's just the same as us so we you know that nobody is going to take us seriously uh, so it will affect our testimony so it is important for us to walk in holiness and also when it comes to exercising our gifts um usually once god grants us a gift he will not withdraw it uh, so you know if uh, i have the ability to talk i will always be able to talk talking will not be something too difficult i will be able to uh, you know preach and teach but what about the backing of the holy spirit you see whenever we do any act of uh, you know ministry using our giftings you know whether it's the you know gift of hospitality or whether it is you know uh, the gift of evangelism um, there's such a thing as backing of the holy spirit I, even as we are doing a little bit the holy spirit goes out in his power through us and does something in those people you know who are receiving uh, the service which we are offering uh, so uh, there's this divine angle to that and so which is why you know when those people walk away and they forget all about us you know uh, god continues to work inside them because something happened that connect happened where uh, when you were ministering to that person using your little gifting and you know you did whatever little bit you could god went forth the holy spirit went forth through you into that person and did something divine in there and he he's going to continue you know uh, watering that seed and going to continue working in that person's life now that's not going to happen if you have been living in sin you will be able to operate in your gift you know if you're a, if you're a teacher you will be able to teach uh, if you're an evangelist you know you you will be able to share the gospel but that effectiveness of what you have done that's not going to last that person may feel good while you're doing it but later um, there's no lasting fruit because for that you need the backing of the holy spirit and that will not be there if you are if you are living in sin so at all these different levels it is important holiness is key um uh, so it's not enough to just have a ticket to heaven uh, we need to be able to walk in spiritual authority and that happens only when we are uh, leading a life of holiness and uh, so james 4 7 to 8 gives a very sensible piece of advice if someone uh, someone could read out uh, uh, james chapter 4 verses 7 to 8 Therefore submit to God resist the devil and he will flee from you draw near to God and he will draw near to you uh cleanse your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double minded okay so uh double mindedness absolute no no because it will just leave you very very confused you'll be one confused christian so you need to make up your mind uh I, do i want to be on god's side or do, you, do i want to be on the world's side double mindedness gets a person nowhere it just leaves the person stagnating at one level or in fact it may take him downhill you may end up at worse levels than you ever were before so double mindedness is a uh, is a complete no uh so make up your mind to be on the lord's side and once you make up your mind to be on the lord's side submit to him in everything there are some there are some things which are easy to submit to because you know uh, we don't really mind <laughs> but then there are some things which are more painful we don't want to give up those things uh, we don't want to do it god's way regarding those particular things and uh, even with regard to such things the basic instruction is submit yourselves to god okay you have chosen to be on his side now that you have made your choice submit to him even in those things which you don't really feel like doing so when you submit to him then you are in a position to resist the devil what on earth can the devil do 
you know once you have decided i am going to submit to the lord i am going to listen to what he is telling me to do when you do that you can just say in jesus name satan you know leave this situation you have no authority over me regarding this thing and he will have to leave he has no choice because you have chosen to submit he has no foothold because you have submitted to the lord and you are doing what the lord wants uh, so uh, we gain great authority over evil and the evil one when we have consciously submitted to the lord and are in line with him and doing his will you know regarding the different things in our life uh, so when we are in that position of submission we will be able to resist and command satan to leave in jesus name and he has no choice but to submit uh, and to us to our word in jesus and leave flee why because uh, he has no foothold he has no a uh, foothold you know into our lives so walking in holiness gives us that spiritual authority um, the prayers that we pray for ourselves and our family the things that we do for other people when in service all of these things will carry greater authority because now we have authority against the works of the evil one and you know all that he you know is trying to uh, bring bring in uh, yes so if a person has accepted christ and still lives in sin till his last hour does that mean that he would go to heaven uh yeah that's a question which people raise um maybe we could look at that after we come back from the break because it's like 3 minutes so let's just continue with whatever we can fill in those 3 minutes after we come back from our break you know we'll uh, we could maybe deal with that uh question um yeah just to look at another one verse uh second timothy chapter 2 Verses nineteen to twenty-one, a very very important uh, Bible passage. Second Timothy two nineteen to twenty-one, please. If someone could read out. Second Timothy two nineteen to twenty-one. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal: the Lord knows those who are His, mm -hmm. and let everyone who names the name of Christ. depart from iniquity mm. but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood and clay some for hon some for honor and some for dishonor therefore if any one cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel of honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work prepared for every good work uh so in uh in a large household you have two kinds of vessels there are vessels which are reserved for special purposes and there are vessels which are used for um you know it says over here very decently common for common use it just basically means you know for all the trash and uh, the waste and uh, you know these are really dishonorable purposes for which certain vessels are used uh so uh, here it's saying in this passage you will be a vessel used for special purposes if you have cleansed yourself from the latter what is the latter that is being talked about over here that refers to your uh, verse 19 where it says you must if you have confessed the name of the lord you must turn away from wickedness from all sinfulness so if you have cleansed yourself from wickedness and sinfulness and all of those wrong choices then you will be a vessel which will be used for honorable things otherwise you will just be the vessel uh, in which satan dumps his filth his trash and he will uh, see to it that your life never rises you know uh, to a higher level and uh, so uh, if we all long to be used by god you know then we have to cleanse ourselves from the latter we would have to cleanse ourselves from all unrighteousness um you know on a daily basis and when we do that then it says by and by you start getting you know god starts the master starts preparing you for every good work it really doesn't matter what kind of a uh, you know challenge comes your way you will be able to help in that situation you will be able to uh, you know be god's hands and feet in that situation and be a blessing to someone
because you are now really equipped for every good work because you are a vessel of honor the god can just flow through you and reach out to that person and do what is required for that person so it really doesn't matter whether you're a, a person working in a secular office or whether you've been someone called into full time ministry you will be a vessel that the holy spirit can just flow through into the workplace into people's lives and and you will be a blessing and my that day on uh, you know judgment day your reward will be great because you were that kind of a vessel okay so it is so important for us for ministry and when i say ministry i mean even people who are in the secular field it is important for us uh, you know to be vessels of honor so that god can use us wherever he has placed us whether he has placed us in ministry or whether he has placed us in the secular field so we will get into our uh, break now when we come back uh, at 11 okay so if we can all come back at 11 o'clock we'll continue with our lesson and we'll also you know uh, address jeffina's question thank you <laughs>